Welcome to Body Kindness, Learn and Grow. This is a special podcast series where we help anyone just getting started with body kindness. We're reflecting on how we have evolved since our earliest episodes. I'm Rebecca Scritchfield. And I'm Bernie Salazar. Let's get ready to spiral up together. If you would like to submit a question for a future episode, visit bodykindnessbook.com slash question. That's bodykindnessbook.com slash question. A couple quick announcements. If you're a helping professional, I want to let you know about Learn and Grow. It's my eight-month high-touch online mentor program. It is not just for dietitians and therapists, though... I love the dietitians and therapists. I want to let you know if you're a trainer, a massage therapist, a yoga instructor, if you're somebody who is involved in mind and body healing, doesn't matter where you're at on your journey, the main criteria is you cannot co-opt and say, well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to help you lose weight. But other than that, I am going to help you learn and grow, figure things out, business strategy, what you need to know about what it means to be practicing body kindness in this space. I would love to for you to consider the program. Uh, There are a limited number of spaces and it is application-based. So if this sounds good, start by checking it out. It's bodykindnessbook.com slash learn and grow. Give your name and email and all that's going to do is that is going to get you on a preview list where you'll be one of the first folks to know when applications are open. You can ask me questions about that program at any time. It's Rebecca at bodykindnessbook.com. Hey, Bernie, what's going on? Rebecca, I'm here and excited to be talking about sleep. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is going to be the reflection on that episode. And I want to kind of catch everybody up with where I'm at now. I think they're going to be really surprised to hear what's going on with me in sleep today. Are you a sleep ninja? I'm excited. (laughs) Um. You can kind of say that, but yeah. it's what side of that um, ninjaness am I on, good or bad? <laughs> yeah, I've got some insights too. So it will be really interesting because for me, there when we were originally recording a couple of years ago, my kids were a lot younger. So there was that. So I'm I'm also looking forward to sharing where I'm at with it after we let Body Kindness listeners take in this episode about sleep and how it relates to your well-being and your practice of body kindness. So I appreciate you getting up and getting ready and chatting with me this morning. And yeah, I'm excited too to talk about sleep and hopefully be helpful. I think that sleep is an area where I kind of feel not always in the best position because I don't always do what I say we all should be doing in a lot of other body kindness ways. I feel like, yeah, you're doing great. You know, I kind of feel worthy of coaching everybody. So I think this is as much for me as it is for you and the listeners. And, you know, we're all in the whole journey of body kindness together, but sleep, especially, you know, I think I can always use a a little self nudge about the importance and value of it. Well, not just that. I think, Rebecca, it's often overlooked. I mean, you always hear, move your body, eat more nutritiously, but you you don't hear too many people say, oh, and get a ton of sleep, you know, <laughs> or make sure you're getting your sleep in or, you know, hey, how was that sleep workout? Or I don't know. You know what I mean? Everybody's <laughs> your asking sleep about it. fitness. That's well, what you we definitely don't have. see people, oh, I like that sleep fitness. And you don't see people taking selfies of them sleeping, you know, so <laughs> I don't know messy what my bed. friends are doing as far as their status, you know, uh, which yeah. is good in a lot of cases. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just kind of come clean, like have a little confessional and just, you know, I'm going to start with you, <laughs> then Got I will it. share. But um, I mean, how much, how was your sleep last night or in general? Kind of give <sighs> give me the lowdown. I'm going on about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So we have the sleep eight challenge going right now. I'm, I'm I'm halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> Four of eight. 
I got four of eight. So, I mean, uh, I'm not even at a D minus right now, uh-huh. but it, it can be challenging. You know, uh, we do have uh, a little one here at home and kind of seems like you never have enough time during the day between work and other responsibilities to just sleep. <laughs> <laughs> And and when I do get to bed early, Rebecca, and I'm going to confess this for any new time parents out there, you might be able to relate. I find myself just staring at the baby monitor, just making sure that her little chest is up and down and she's not <laughs> turned over or I don't know, yeah. just admiring her. Um, and this is, you know, six months in. So I have to really start getting some more meaningful shut eye here. (laughs) Well, I mean, certainly, I mean, I've been there with my two kids and as a new parent, at least that's a better excuse. I mean, I literally, since I was talked to you about, okay, let's do this summertime sleep eight challenge. I was excited about it because I actually thought my sleep was going really well. And (laughs) I swear after I launched the first blog post and we brought it up on the last episode, it's been horrible for me. Like, Some days are good and some days just are are awful. Like last night was a bad night. And unlike you, I really, I don't have much of an excuse. I mean, my husband's traveling. When he travels, obviously, I've got the two young kids by myself. And the older daughter who is fine in her own bed, you know, I want to sleep with you, mommy. So there are, you know, definitely... Uh, the kids, even, you know, in their toddler stages can be a distraction. You, Audrey has nightmares about bears and like she'll wake me up sometimes and make me put her shoes on her so she can run away from the bear better. Guys, <laughs> I love that. I've never heard that, but I love how proactive she is. You can totally tell she's your kid. She's right, like, just but, in case I have to get going. <laughs> put my shoes on. My shoes but on. Um, yeah, but obviously your kid, you know, it, it, your kids might wake you up or you you might have a sleeping partner that is snoring or tossing and turning, waking you up. So it might not even be something that you can control. You know, we'll definitely get more into those different scenarios. But, you know, I would say for me personally, it's like when I woke up this morning realizing how tired I was, it, it just kind of all, you know, like slapped me in the face with like kind of what I wanted to talk about today. And it certainly the scenarios where I'm getting in my own way, you know, so I was a, I was organized with the schedule and getting, you know, the girls to lay in bed on time. And we try to read books or kind of do little picture games or things that, you know, don't involve screens. So that's like the number one thing, like we don't have a TV in our room. I do use my cell phone for an alarm and I don't have to, because I have the other alarm that, you know, we use before cell phone alarms. But it's by the bed, and that is really a habit that I think I want to break because what happened last night is, you know, we fell asleep, and, um, you know, they're snoozing away, and something happened, and I just woke up. I don't know if, like, that feeling when you fall asleep and you kind of, your legs jerk around and you wake yourself up, but something happened, and I woke up, and I got the bright idea of just going into my phone, and then that was it. And and it would be one thing if it was like, I'm reading articles I really wanted to read. I mean, it's still, the light keeps you up. It delays your melatonin anyway. But, you know, at least there'd be something productive or beneficial. And, you know, I mean, I have audiobooks I could have listened to or yoga radio that I listen to when I have difficulty sleeping or even a meditation app or something. But what did I do? I literally put on reruns of Sex in the City. And just, <laughs> <laughs> because my, I'll blame the kids again, but they, they, you know, they showed me how on Amazon, I can't believe my three-year-old is showing me technology, but how on Amazon um, Prime, you can get certain shows for free. So we've got like Daniel Tiger and things that they watch for in a pinch, you know, it's kind of in a pinch on the phone. Okay. I need them to calm down. I'll give them that real quick. And we don't do it before bed. But then the phone is sitting there and because Amazon, you know, because it's right there, it's just so easy for me to click. And it's like, I mean, so it's not even like the good shows that are out now that I'm binge watching. It's it's old, you know, 1999, (laughs) Sex and the City. It wasn't even that good the first time around. And I was watching it for maybe an hour and a half last (laughs) night. And then it took me another hour and a half to try to fall back asleep. So from 11 until 2 was just waste, complete waste, you know, and I I was in bed, you know, before that. So I got 
probably one good sleep cycle, but you need five good sleep cycles in a night. And, wow. um, you know, it was just, I don't want to say dumb, but I guess dumb because in the big picture, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick it back to you and to kind of let me know what you think or, you know, what you can relate to. But in, in the big picture, when I reflect on it, it's like, I'm not even enjoying the crap I'm doing when I'm not sleeping. And that is what really angers me because I can feel it the <laughs> next day. And I'm just, it'd be one thing if it was great, a great reason yes. to miss your sleep, but it's not even good. Yeah. I know that there have been times where, you know, I almost, um, for some reason I'm using maybe my mobile device or even a television to, 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 I guess, quote unquote, decompress. And what's crazy is you just get sucked in, you know, um, to a show or to whatever. And you're absolutely right that the next day I have on multiple occasions, unfortunately, have that feeling of, wow, that wasn't even worth feeling like I'm feeling right now. So sleep to me is something that, again, I'm so glad that we're talking about today because I don't feel that it's valued as much as it needs to be. I know that um, there's a ton of research out there, which I'll leave up to you later on. But just for me in general, I uh, I don't uh, feel well. Uh, I make bad decisions when I'm not getting the sleep that I need. And needless to say that my, my, my appetite increases. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm out there reaching for little snacks here and there. And, you know, I'm like that... Uh, I'm so glad that my wife's a sound sleeper because she would probably think that we were being robbed with as many little trips as I can take if I allow myself to, if I'm not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, okay. So I kind of, I kind of came up with a framework for us to chat today and, and you kind of started, started going down there. So, so I'm going to, I'm going to kick it back to you with some questions, but I think it'll be a good conversation and helpful for you, me, you and the listeners if we talk a little bit about what happens when we get bad sleep, like biologically, like what's wrong with bad sleep, you mentioned appetite stuff. So that's all accurate. We'll see what other useful tips we can add and pull together. But then, so what happens with bad sleep, barriers to good sleep, we kind of already started going there. There's other people or yourself. And then how to bounce back from bad sleep, because really your mindset and what you do after a bad night's sleep is the second most important thing you can do once you made the mistake of not good enough sleep. You know, for the benefit of everybody, can you give me some examples of just kind of like when you were able to associate poor sleep with poor decision making or just kind of a bad night's sleep with a bad day the next day? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there has been many nights recently, like I said, especially with the little one, but even before, I mean, you don't have to be a parent or I didn't have to be a parent to, <laughs> you know, kind of make spur the moment choices. I would be laying in bed and, you know, maybe it would be um, watching TV or on a mobile device. And all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, man, you know, it would go really great with, um, you know, Tom Hanks is big from the eighties, <laughs> uh, uh, ice cream, you know, and all of a sudden, like, we'll talk later about why that's there. But, but at the same time, it just makes perfect sense. And that's where I'm going because of okay. course that makes sense. Um, so, so in that regard, it's like you are, you're staying up late for a little bit of me time, unwind me time, which yeah. is a reward. And then it's like, ooh, I know what would make this extra rewarding. Let's get Absolutely. some food too. Absolutely. Well, you know, because, <laughs> and again, I don't mean to, to, to get too crazy into this big movie, but there's a, a little song in there that's sung. And I'm like, wow, yeah, that's an ice cream song. That sounds like an ice cream song. <laughs> um, and I think that that ties right into that really, uh, you know, uh, poor decision making because who watches a movie and thinks, yeah, right. ice cream. Right. Okay. So kind of in that scenario, what you're doing when you're missing sleep, you also could be eating. Whereas if you were just sleeping, you'd be giving your body what it needs and you'd feel better the next day. Oh, absolutely. And not just that, let's be very clear. It's not like I, I was without dinner or, yeah. you know, felt like that was a necessity or was mm -hmm. even hungry mm -hmm. um, or was doing it consciously. And I think it goes back to the comment you made earlier, Rebecca, which is, you know, did I even really enjoy this? <laughs> you know, because next thing you know, you know, it's gone and you're like, oh my goodness, I'm just chewing on a stick here. Yeah. And that's the thing that I would say too, you know, I mean, you know, me and the body kind of philosophy is they're, they're really, 
what you choose to eat is up to you. My my good friend Leslie says, what you chew is up to you. And I just oh, love I like that. that. Uh, you know, there's no, you know, morally good or bad food. So it's not really about the ice cream, but it's about that really what your body needs in that moment is sleep. Oh yeah. Yeah. And and it's 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 not getting it. And so not only is that impacting the choice when you're choosing not to sleep, you know, all the other choices you make that really, you know, might be giving you a short-term reward, but not really a longer-term reward. But then you have the consequences the next day of a bad night's sleep. So have you, like, I mean, what's, you know, the first thing that you feel after a bad night's sleep? Like, kind of, like, what's that first thought you have in the morning? Oh, oh, that first oh right away. Morning? Right away, it's like, already? Again? <laughs> This is not going to be fun. Like, that's how I'm starting my day. Like, yeah. I'm even using that voice. This is not going to be fun. It's like an Eeyore voice, you know? And <laughs> it saddens me that that's how I'm starting my day yeah. because I have so many great things that that um, I get to do with my day. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, without question, it doesn't take much poor sleep for it to create a problem biologically. So even one night of getting you know, and everyone's different, but it could be five hours or, you know, six hours. And in some cases, it's even just less than eight hours. You can feel a difference. But especially when you're around the five, six hour mark, your body doesn't get a chance to do all the things that it needs to do during the sleep window. And I think that that, that's very important for people to understand that we see sleep as like, like an unnecessary, almost waste of time. That's when I can't get stuff done. But if you really understood how much work your body was doing, it would really make sense. So when you wake up the next morning, cranky, irritable, like you said, Eeyore, like, uh, you know, I'm thinking of inside out and sadness. Um, <laughs> maybe she's like, oh, woe is me. Um, <laughs> but that is directly related to an inadequate amount of sleep. Your energy levels are low. You know, your body really didn't get the time it needs to kind of like literally clean up like the toxic sludge that's going on in your brain and in your body and give your muscles a chance to recover. There's important things happen when you're dreaming that you need to get, you know, a certain number of sleep cycles, which are these are these 90-minute cycles where you um, go through these stages and, you know, you kind of get go from lighter to deeper sleep and different things happen in your body throughout the stages. It's not just you having a bad attitude. It's that when you don't get the sleep your body needs, it's, it's almost like your body's saying, hey, I couldn't get my work done. And, you know, there's a reason they use the figure of speech like, oh, let me sleep on it, right? Because mm -hmm. after a good night's sleep, your head is clearer, your mind is clearer, you're more oh, optimistic. Absolutely. absolutely. You know what? One time I had uh, a doctor tell me because I, I was, again, uh, not getting as much sleep as I needed. And uh, this doctor literally said, well, what are you thinking about? What are you worried about? You know, and I was saying I have, you know, the, the, something with work or this and that. And they just looked at me and said, you know, you can't solve that from your bed. So you might as well just get some sleep, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that really resonated with me because there are times where it's not just technology that's keeping me up, but it's literally sitting there thinking about the things that I, I guess, like you said, I could be doing instead mm -hmm. or should be doing or need to do tomorrow or worrying right. needlessly. Yeah. And you can't really do much Mm -hmm. from bed. <laughs> right. Like what action can you take? Kind of, that was yeah. great advice from your doctor, actually. Yeah. And that's kind of getting into, you know, one of the, one of the areas of barriers of good sleep, kind of like when, when, it, you know, it could be a mix of you and others, but at least in that moment, you're getting in your own way because it sounds like, you know, so like a little bit of worry is okay, right? A little bit of worry, concern, you know, you can look at that as, hey, there are things that matter to me. There are things that are important to me. You know, we just talked about the upside of stress and stress being energy. Yes. So in some ways, if you're worrying about something, it's probably a source of stress in your life. And so as you continue to work on seeing stress as energy and that there's a bright side to it, you know, that can kind of help that little bit of worry where something's concerning you, that can help keep that from spiraling out of control into more 
overthinking or rumination that actually is associated with anxiety and could be associated with depression as well. So um, I think that was great advice from the doctor to help you realize that, look, if you can't take action on something from the bed, maybe you can kind of set it aside. Uh, I actually have a notepad by my bed. And if I'm going through a kind of a rumination, you know, or this, that, sometimes it's just like my brain is not shutting down yet. And um, so I'll just, instead of like emailing myself, I'll just have a low light on and I'll write down the things that are bothering me because I I feel better saying, okay, you wrote it down, you're not going to forget, or you know this matters. The right time to handle this is when you're awake the next day. Oh, that's a really good idea. I like that one because uh, again, I would take that advice before you saying the whole notepad thing and be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to write it down in my email, you know, because <laughs> uh, we tend to go right towards technology. But so, again, sleep for me is something that I guess I never really thought too much of, but uh, what I do remember, you know, and have noticed is uh, the better sleep that I'm getting, the better I feel just in general. And I can, and it's always during my most healthy balanced times in my life that mm-hmm. that I, I know I was getting the uh, an adequate amount of sleep mm-hmm. and everything just kind of felt in balance and it's and that's why I'm so glad that we're bringing this up because yeah I, I totally totally when I'm at my at my healthiest when I'm living the best version of me mm-hmm. I'm I'm getting my sleep in. And yeah. it's funny to actually say that out loud because you don't normally associate, you know, uh, I didn't normally associate, you know, being at the top of my game with getting uh, a good eight hours of sleep. Yeah. Well, because when you don't get enough sleep, it affects your decision making and kind of you can very, you know, that that mindset can very much be, well, I didn't get good sleep. So, you know, today is going to, you know, be a complete waste. Or the way you set yourself off believing in what you say, you're likely going to make true. And so certainly when you're working on what do you do if you had a bad night's sleep, what makes the most sense? How do we practice body kindness during that? I think that becomes really important. I wanted to make sure that we talked a little bit about like when you get bad sleep, like what, you know, other things that happen in your body biologically that might feel in your control, but it's not necessarily true. And one of them is how it impacts your food choices. Uh, are there any foods you typically crave when you're not sleeping enough? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's for me, it's it's more of the sweets, the things that when I'm consciously making choices, mm-hmm. I won't reach for first yeah. or won't reach for mindlessly. Yeah. Uh, again, what I tend to do is really celebrate the sweets in my life or the treats in my life. And I've shared this with you before, you know, I will go for a cookie, but I'm making sure it's the best cookie. I haven't, you know, and I'm, I'm looking at this cookie and loving the cookie and then consuming the cookie. When I'm on lack of sleep, it's, it's like, oh, cookie gone. Yeah. Well, you know, so couple things. It is more difficult to regulate your impulses. Your prefrontal cortex doesn't get in your brain, does not get the rest it needs to make calm, rational decisions. So, you know, if for the lack of a better term, that lack of willpower, that is an impact of the sleep. Um, but there are also hormonal triggers. So you mentioned like craving sweets. So certainly in the processed carbohydrates, food and the sugary foods, which, you know, Again, just to clarify for the new listeners, go back and listen from the very beginning because body kindness is not about policing food. So, you know, we love sugar here. You know, we love cookies. But to under, it's all in the context of how or why you're eating something. And that's where body kindness would come in is where you layer on a curiosity about like, well, why am I reaching for this sugary food right now? Or why is it that today I'm craving these comfort foods or snack foods? And one of the issues when you're lacking sleep is that your body's tired. So it doesn't think you have enough sugar. It's looking for quick energy. And that's what sugar is. It's quick energy. The other thing it's looking for, it's more stressed out. Um, it has higher cortisol levels. So get a hormonal disruption. And it's looking to be more calm. So it wants to create serotonin, which is released when you consume carbohydrate foods. So It's kind of like you can't win when you get poor sleep, you know, hormonally, because your body doesn't think it has sugar when it does, and it's just not craving sort of the slow release, oh, you know what I want? I want, you know, a salad with quinoa and beans. (laughs) And the other downside of that, too, is that 
then you associate guilt with a food. Like, I don't know, you ate an unhealthy muffin at breakfast and you really didn't enjoy it. You really regretted that decision and now you don't feel well later and you blame yourself for making a bad choice. Well, it really isn't the food as much as the lack of sleep that needs to be fixed because that can help you make your calm, rational decisions. So not that you never choose that muffin or whatever it is in the morning, but that you think about, you have energy to think about what what do I think will energize me? What would I enjoy right now? Is now the good time to enjoy the muffin and things like that? So that's one set of hormonal changes. And I want to talk about another one, but I want to see if you had any comments or thoughts or reaction to what I've well, said. Well, so yeah, I mean, my, my reaction is just how amazing our bodies truly are. But we, we are so separated from the fact that our body works in this way that, you know, sometimes it does take a conversation like this one to really point out the fact that your body is compensating when, you know, for something that that it doesn't need uh, because of something that it's lacking. And yep. to me, that's that's amazing. And I know that, you know, it's it's uh, it's obviously what we talk about here on Body Kindness, but for our listeners, and if you are a first-time listener, you know, that's what we're getting at is let's let's really be aware of ourselves more mm-hmm. so so that we can be kinder to our bodies. Yeah, that, no, that's that was an aha moment for me, Rebecca. <laughs> as as simple as it was, it, it's it made sense to me because you're right. There's times where on top of that, I'll, I'll get up, grab something, maybe uh, again, my, I, I just don't need at that time. Mm-hmm. And then be mad or frustrated at myself for making that decision when you know, I just need to figure out why I, I, I went in that direction in the first place. You know, it. they've done uh, studies to show that poor sleep affects your brain and your body like being drunk. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're not you don't you're not drinking, so you don't get I guess the fun or whatever elements of that, but you get the downsides. And um so I mean, if you think about it, you could even think about well, what foods do you crave when you're drunk and before you pass out, you know, back in the day when we actually had time for that stuff. So you're telling me that not getting sleep is pretty much like being drunk is <laughs> is what you're saying, Rebecca. <laughs> back to the back to the college days, yeah. So, right. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah. So it's you know it's good to just kind of take a look at what you're doing, and you know again not to like you talked about awareness being key before. You know, um, if we wouldn't drink regularly and expect to function, then don't expect to cheat on your sleep and function well too. I think that's the I think really that's the bottom point. line message with that. Um, although alcohol really does inhibit your sleep as well. And so, you know, a lot of times people who have trouble falling asleep at night will drink, but even though it helps you fall asleep, you actually don't get restful sleep if you um, drink to kind of go to bed. So I would look for other calming ways to unwind, like deep breathing or some restorative yoga poses, you know, just trying to relax. So, body. so I, okay. And, and this is for all our listeners out there that maybe aren't yogis, because I know that you, you're into it, but let me tell you, I, I love the idea of yoga. My body just doesn't agree with me all the time. So I'm going to speak to a whole other subset of our listeners, Rebecca, and I'm going to ask you, are there any foods that might aid in sleep? Yeah. I, um, I, I'm going to go ahead and just, I'm going to gear this conversation <laughs> towards me. Is there, and, and again, it's not, I say it jokingly, but, yeah. but is there something naturally out there that, that maybe if I am choosing to reach for something yeah. is going to assist with sleep? Yeah. Well, so if you're trying to improve your sleep, there's there's a lot of different things that you can do. I mean, okay. related to your question about food, um, I would not I would not overuse caffeine. You know, I'm sure I'm going to drink an extra cup of coffee today because of my bad sleep last night. But I'm really mindful about you know later on in the day, just acknowledging you know what I I just have low energy because I didn't sleep well. And what is it that I need to do to take care of myself instead? Or we talked a little bit about the the cravings that come up, you know, that that makes sense because your body's lacking energy. The the body kindness approach there would be to think about your choices and think about just, you know, be present. Okay, I'm tired. I didn't get enough sleep. That might be why I'm craving this food. Is now a good time to enjoy it? Is this going to energize me? How will I feel after? So I think all those are great things. If you're hungry and it's around bedtime, 
you know, I would make sure that you truly feel hungry. Maybe you were up a little bit later than normal or you didn't really get that much at dinner. Uh, I would make it a very small snack and I would make it something that gives you carbohydrate um, and hopefully melatonin as well. So like tart cherries and walnuts, they are naturally higher in melatonin. The melatonin that you get will just help your body release its melatonin. You could also try a simple one cup of tart cherry juice. That that's pretty interesting. Yeah. So 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 foods that are maybe high higher in in, in melatonin. Yeah, i um, you know there's other different nutrients too that are important like magnesium and calcium. There's stuff you can do with chickpeas, like make roasted chickpeas or have a little bit of hummus and veggies. But you know that's if right before bed. I would really consider whether or not you need nourishment or whether or not you're just tired and really need to go to uh, No, no, absolutely. And not just that. I mean, I, I, all, all kidding aside, a lot of times if I do, you know, reach for something later when I, you know, my body really doesn't need it for me, I'll get, you know, indigestion or acid mm-hmm. reflux and then that's keeping me up. So exactly. it's just a really bad cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to quickly share um, the other hormonal impact. And, you know, it it has to do with hormones we've talked about before that are kind of opposites, leptin and ghrelin. And so just as the, you know, 101 reminder, ghrelin is a hormone. You kind of, I think of it like as the grow hormone. So when ghrelin is high, it increases your appetite. It increases your food cravings. And, and when ghrelin is high, leptin is low. And leptin is kind of like, you know, I'm satisfied, I'm full, I'm not interested in food. And as little as one night of around five hours or so of sleep can disrupt the balance of that. And so the hormones are basically released at certain stages of sleep. So what happens is when you when your total time gets shortchanged, you didn't really get the length of time to get the right balance of leptin and ghrelin. So you wake up with more ghrelin, the grow hormone, and less leptin. And, Mm. you know, if you have one night of bad sleep, the truth is your body, if you just listen to your body and take care of it the next day, you can get better sleep the next night. And it's not that you really make up for it, but your body will kind of push you to sleeping longer. You'll feel great and energized and rejuvenated. And, you know, it's not like one or two nights or a short period of your life, you know, that you need to have all kinds of stress and anxiety around bad sleep. But you certainly don't want to self-sabotage and you want to work with your body to get back into good amounts of sleep. But if it's your habit to shortchange yourself on sleep, if this is your habit, it is going to impact these hormone levels. And so, you know, I'm not a diet person and and everyone should focus on being in their body that is best for them. And that's a variety of weights and shapes. So I I don't want to misspeak here. Yeah, no, I mean- but, 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 but I can relate to this comment very personally, Rebecca, because when I'm my best version, uh, I really am present. I'm getting the sleep. I'm, you know, nourishing my body well because I'm making those right decisions. Everything just works. I keep saying, you know, it just, I feel so balanced. Yeah. And throughout this conversation, I'm realizing, yes, yes, my situation's a little bit different, but everybody has their situations that they can say, you know, hinders this or that. But mm-hmm. the truth is, you know, in in having this this conversation with you, I I realize I really do need to focus more so on this and that I'm a I'm a better person when I get sleep, not just for myself, but for my family, for my daughter, for my job, yep. you know. Yeah. And that's the exact kind of mindset you want to have and you know, I think think that we can maybe help each other and the listeners out a little bit um, before we wrap up to just kind of talk about different ways that you can bounce back from, you know, having bad sleep. And and you talked about this mindset of thinking of the kind of person you are when you get good sleep. And I think that is very, very important. So, you know, you just start from recognizing, okay, sleep is important to me. Why is it important? Because I, I like who I am, the decisions I make, I'm happier, life is better, you know? So then, it you know, so now you have a desire there and now it's about taking immediate actions, you know? So, you know, we talked about the Eeyore feeling or the sadness from inside out feeling. We're like, oh, you know, it's really going to be a bad one today. (laughs) And that that attitude and mindset is everything. So, you know, I know for me that attitude came in this morning after my bad sleep. And it really is just an issue of, okay, it doesn't have to be that way. So those are just thoughts. Those are negative thoughts based on how you feel. You know, oh, you wasted your time. You should feel guilty. Now you're going to have a more difficult time today. Yada, yada, yada in your head. It's just words. And so what you have control over 
is your choices. So the first thing that came to my mind was, okay, make sure you hydrate because that helps with your energy levels. It helps you feel good. You know, don't overdo caffeine because you might have that tendency. So it's like my little self warnings. You know, make sure that you choose foods that energize you and help you feel better, not worse. So pay attention to cravings, but also pay attention to if my hormones are off a little bit, that might be the source of a craving. Not that I really want to enjoy some comfort food. So know the difference there. And then the last thing that's on my radar for today is it's a planned workout day. It happens to be a day where I'm planning to do one of my solid core classes, one of my more intense workouts. And I'm like dreading it, (laughs) you know, (laughs) I'm really dreading it because it's like, oh, of all the things, you know, and you know, look, if I end up doing a gentle walk today or maybe go to, go to yoga, you know, which actually can be challenging too, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't want to skip. So, and that's the thing, like I, I, I feel committed to doing the solid core class because getting in there within 10 minutes, I know I'll feel better. I might be yawning on the way in, but for me, It would be body kindness to do the workout anyway, because I know it's going to help me sleep better. I know it's going to help me feel good. Like I still took care of myself, even though I made some mistakes the previous day. So I'm really going to be committed. I'm going to go and maybe me manifesting this will make sure I do it. But you know, (laughs) no matter what you decide, listeners, like just don't, don't be so black and white with it. Don't be so all or nothing. Don't self-sabotage and that and make your day ruined because of a bad night of sleep, whether it was in your control or out of your control, you know, it, it's all in your response and your mindset after. No, absolutely. And I, I, I love that, that you are, you know, that we're ending with that because far too often, you know, we really tend to beat ourselves up. And, and I know that I have beat myself up in the past over lack of sleep. And, and uh, those are some really great suggestions. You know, let's get back on track. Let's get moving. And I love the fact that you said don't overdo it on the coffee because that's my first instinct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Cool. And we're back. Yes, I hope that our listeners didn't sleep through that (laughs) episode uh, because we are about to recap where Rebecca and I are now in terms of sleep. Are we getting enough sleep? Uh, What are we doing if we aren't? And how great we feel if we are. So I'm going to go ahead, Rebecca, and I'm going to flip the script here a little bit. And I'm going to start off by asking you how you're doing in terms of sleep nowadays. Yeah. Well, so what's, I think the most interesting for me is that I've gotten to a point to where I can really see how much I need good sleep to have the kind of days that I want to have, right? So I can't say that every night, you know, goes off as planned, but, you know, in the last couple of years, having older kids does help somewhat because you know they're they're six and four and a half, but they are also going through this sort of mommy competition of, you know, we have our nighttime routine of reading, oh, one more glass of water. You know, they just kind of delay it. But because of what I need to do to help get them to bed, I am also doing my nighttime routine along with them. And by the time I get them to bed, I am, I just feel ready. So I have much more become the kind of person who will go to bed on the early side. Like I, for the most part, have cut out all TV. I have stopped trying to work at night because that's not when I'm my most creative. And so, yeah, I, I could literally be laying in bed at 8.30. And sometimes my mind's like, do, 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 what are you doing here in bed? But I'll play an audio book. And because I'm not in a screen, that helps me go to sleep. Or I'll do, I try to do some type of meditation with insight timer, a loving kindness meditation, a body scan to relax myself. But it's usually not too challenging for me to fall asleep. I do struggle with staying asleep, and and this can happen to anyone at any time in their life, but I've heard that it can be correlated with, as you get older, like 40s plus, where your brain will wake up and just be ready to go, but, you know, it's like three in the morning. So sometimes I deal with that, but I practice 
coaching myself back down to rest. So rather than get super stressed, you're not sleeping, you're not sleeping, you're not sleeping. Ah, you know, it's like, oh, okay, my brain is going. Like, if if I need to use the restroom, I'll use the restroom, get a sip of water, and go back to bed. But just allowing myself to go back into rest. I might do a quick lavender oil again, and just tell myself, hey, it's okay. Just as long as you lay here, you're getting rest. I'll usually be able to fall back asleep. So that those are some of the the routine. Sometimes I wake up before my alarm clock and I think that's great. I think that has to do with letting myself go to bed earlier. On the downside, when I I would say it's the sleep stress combination that that gets me into trouble. So if I'm feeling too wound up about something and I don't feel like I've I've coped with the stress adequately, that usually keeps me up, makes it harder to fall asleep. And sometimes I will, although I'm really, like literally, it happens once and it reminds me how much I don't want to do that, but I'll be like, I need the glass of wine. You know, it's not like a glass of wine to just like enjoy and savor something special with my partner. It's like it's a stress response. And I can tell in me that when I have that stress response and a glass of wine, it's easy to go to a second glass or just a larger pour first class. And I notice a difference in my sleep. It's it's more likely that I'm gonna wake up at that 3 a.m. And when you have that sort of combination of stress, anxiety, sleep, and alcohol, it can it might help you fall asleep, but you don't get restful sleep. And so I've seen that in the science, um, wrote about it in the book a little bit. I don't know how deeply I made those connections, but um, but it's the lived experience that really teaches me, oh my gosh. You know, this isn't this ha- it's not how I want to enjoy alcohol in my life. You know, this really isn't helpful. It's a short-term band-aid. And I've actually enlisted Andy, my partner. I've, you know, I talked to him about this when I noticed when it happened. And I said, you know, it would be great. You know, I did not ask him to be the police officer, but I said it would be great if, you know, those once in a while times where I come in the door, or just when you come in the door and I'm like, I need that glass of wine. That just, it would be great if you said, hey, like, do, is there anything I can do? Like, do you need a minute of alone time? Did you want to take a bath or shower? Did you want to, you know, do something to take care of yourself? You know, and then we can talk about enjoying some wine with dinner or something like that. So he, even reaching out like that, I found would be beneficial it's not that I'm requiring him, okay, now he has to be the one that remembers that this is what I need, but just telling him, hey, you know, I might get stressed and I might sort of feel like I need wine to cope with that stress, but it doesn't really serve my values because I think it interferes with my sleep and there are other ways I want to enjoy that glass of wine. So here's ways you can help me. And I feel that that's a really helpful thing to bring up because it is an area where I feel like when things are good, it's easy. And I don't even ask for the wine. But if, you know, stress kind of bubbles up and I feel like I'm going to ask for that wine to cope with the stress, I know that's not in line with my values and I know it's going to hurt my sleep. And it can be really helpful to reach out and ask someone for support. So, so I really actually feel very, very good about how sleep fits into my life. I would say the one thing I've had to learn to accept through all of it is the limits of time in that in no way I am going to get done all the things I want to get done in some sort of perfectly bowed up plan. By the time I protect my sleep, what I must do for childcare and clients and just certain work-related things, there are always going to be things that I wanted to get done. And I'm going to have to be really careful about when I'm going to let like emergency items interfere with sleep because it's it's not in line with who I want to be. Wow. No, I mean that's that's fantastic. I like literally and I'm saying it that way because I am not there at all. I really enjoyed when you shared about how when you're getting the kids ready for bed and going through their routine, how you've kind of now taken that on and it coincides with you getting ready for bed. That's something that I just you know, have not been able to figure out um, with my little one and you have too. So I don't know how you do it, but I think it's great. As a matter of fact, I think that this is the one thing that I haven't really been able to, or I don't feel like I've made a ton of progress on. I'm just being really 
out there and direct about it. I, I, well, tell me what's up. Well, I mean, I'm getting a little bit more sleep. I think, you know, in our first recording of the sleep podcast episode, I was talking about four hours. I'm probably at five to six on a good day. You know, for me, it really is just still staying up a bit, thinking about the day. I think more than anything, and I'm just going to put it out there, it's probably just the mobile device, you know, on my phone scrolling mindlessly. And I think that you even shared it. It was like, I could see if it was something productive or something that I was interested in. But I mean, there's so much content of just dumb (laughs) stuff out there, like just dumb stuff that like you, I mean, let me be clear. Like I'll start off with informing myself about what went on that day or that week, or, you know, I'm going to read NPR, listen to the daily or, you know, just like do stuff that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And then inevitably, like I make my way over to Instagram and I'm like, Oh wow, look at that. That looks neat. Or what's this doing? Or, you know, Facebook, I'm not a big Facebook person, but if you go into that world, that's just a big drain of energy. Like you just, and I don't even understand where half that stuff comes from, but it ends up on your feed and you're like, I guess this is kind of interesting to me. Anyway, I am just wasting a ton of time in front of the screen when I have put myself to bed thinking that I am going to get a good night's rest, you know, and, and it sounds like an easy fix, right? Like just shut off your phone. And when you say it that way, you're like, maybe, yeah, it it is easy, but I, I, I don't know what, There's obviously some type of addictive quality about these devices and the light and the screen and not, you know, being able to rest even after you put the phone down for another half an hour or hour. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know exactly what it is. I mean, I think I've I've shared with you what I think it is, but Mm -hmm. uh, how to kind of fix it and and, and give more, um, pay more attention and give more care to the sleep is something Mm -hmm. that I know I need to do. Mm Mm-hmm. Because well, I, mean, I mean, the next day you feel, you, you feel it. I mean, mm-hmm. everything that you described, I'm like, oh, that sounds so right. That sounds so good. I wish I could do that, you know? Um, mm-hmm. But, but how many nights a week, I mean, would you say pretty much you don't get good sleep most nights or that you get good sleep some nights and other nights you don't like, what's the most nights? I I, I would say most nights. And you feel like there's things that seven that I'm just like not feeling like I'm getting rested sleep, Uh you know? I mean, you also have a three-year-old and you work and you know, like there's a lot, (laughs) but it's no, absolutely. Absolutely. But there's times where I just, and I'm sure our listeners can relate where, I mean, I know I have to get to sleep and I think you just shared it. You know, you're like, there's times where you just kind of wake up and you, you've really, shared some insight as to how you get yourself to go back to sleep. Like me, there's points where I'm just like, forget it. It's three o'clock. I'm not going to stop thinking about this. Let me get up and shower and get ready for my day. And like, you know, start getting things ready for the kid to get her day going and where I should, you know, I just shouldn't do that. I know that. I mean, there's times, especially living here in Chicago, where if there's snow on the ground, I'm like, well, might as well get up and start shoveling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's that's another thing of it's another thing that gets added, which brings me to the other question that I was going to ask is, do you feel that although we I think we need to always as parents need to reframe our expectations for what's workable, but do you feel that you amidst the to dos that you have an adequate sort of this is what I get to do, what I'm choosing to do to kind of take care of me that feels like something just for you, right? So I don't know. It's, I mean, it's great, right? When you get to go out for a massage, right? But all the logistics and that between time, money, you know, I mean, needs to happen, right? But like, that's probably not something every day, right? But me... No, I totally painting my nails. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I've tried that. It doesn't work for me, Becca. No, I mean... You know, honestly, I I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I can see that. Absolutely. Because anybody who is around children um, or who has kids, uh, they're nonstop. Like, it's not even... Like, let me just say, for our stay-at-home parents or for our parents, our single parents, or, I mean, just all parents, like, it's a big deal to look after and raise a child because... 
there is no off button on these little creatures. <laughs> I mean, they are just nonstop little dizzying machines. And for me, as much as I absolutely adore and love being her, her dad, my mind is constantly going. I mean, I, it's to me, it, it would be easier to put in a 12 hour day at a job than 12 hours with a kid. I mean, because at least then you can take a lunch, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, or <laughs> use the restroom without yeah. wondering if your kid's going to get into trouble or what they're going to do. So, yeah, I mean, at the end of the night, I guess so. I guess it really is like completely mind numbing content. I mean, because there's times where I'm thinking to myself, as soon as she goes to bed, I'm going to get going on this, this, and this. I'm going to get this done because this has to get done for this. Or I'm just going to sit down and enjoy a show or or whatever. And it never Mm -hmm. happens because the first thing that mindlessly creeps into my head, I just tend to fixate on and, and allow to just take away from what I know would be better for my body, which is getting an adequate amount of sleep and, and quality sleep. Mm -hmm. Well, I see it all the time when what's connected to the sleep issue is just the daytime is always so kind of chaotic and it's like giving, 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 it's chaotic, it's tiring. And you get to the late at night and it's like, you might feel physically tired, but it's like, wait a minute, I don't want to, I don't want to go to bed. I want to see what's on TV or I want to scroll on social for a little bit. And usually, I mean, I completely empathize with clients because it's a real need to have something positive, joyful, relaxing, soothing that you feel is, you know, fitting that purpose. Usually I'll talk to folks about, remembering the value of sleep and what what it would feel like to get some better sleep. And because your poor sleep is so consistent, um, usually when I have clients that are dealing with that amount of frequency of poor sleep, it's almost like they they can't even imagine how much they could function better and they need to function better, which is part of the motivation to keep going. So it becomes this issue of, kind of self-negotiating, right? Like believing that if believing that if you get better sleep, if you put an effort into it, it will become more effortless and that you will feel a benefit that is highly motivating. But at the same time, don't be so all or nothing with it. So if you look at what you could change in that routine, right? So what happens after bedtime? Could you say, here's this window and it's 30 minutes and this is where Jen and I cuddle, little TV show, a fraction of a show, or just chit chat, something that might help you feel relaxed or fulfilled, you know, and just a little bit more positive in the emotions. And then you'll feel that tendency to want to kind of do more, stay awake. But if you tried to choose the longer term reward and the longer term benefit of how you might feel you go to sleep earlier and give yourself the option to get a longer window of sleep that it could be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, and I, and I, I even said this, uh, on, on the first, on the first podcast about sleep was, you know, I do appreciate the fact that you're bringing this to light and that it was in the book. I mean, it's such an important thing that I think goes underappreciated. It has a huge, uh, effect on, the quality of our life and our days and our bodies and our overall health. For me, it was always everything else. Like, what are you putting in your body? Are you moving your body? Are you, you know, sleep is something that I, I, again, I feel like I've made so much progress in so many other aspects of our work together. And this one, I, I'm just straightforward saying I have been, uh, resistant to, resistant to tackling the way that I've tackled our other work together. Mm -hmm. And, and, um, I, I know that some of our listeners can relate because this is the one aspect of your life where like people, I mean, over time, the effects can be seen physically, but like, it's not something that you're going to see other than on a mattress commercial, the importance of sleep. It's just not talked about that much. Mm-hmm. Um, so I almost feel like if I'm going to not address one thing, this is the one that I'm going to feel the least guilty about not addressing. Does that 
Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I talked so, in the book about um, busyness being a bragging, right? You know, it's like, so that's part of, there's this cultural value of I'm so busy, I have all this stuff to do. And yeah, I think our personal time and our sleep, it's not culturally valued. And it, with 24 seven social media always on, it's something that is hard to resist. And it's, and it's, you know, it's no different than any other habit or behavior as far as like the brain mechanisms of cue action and reward. So after I put my daughter down to sleep, then I take the action of getting myself ready for bed. Then I take X amount of minutes for unwinding, bonding, right? And when that time is done, then I get back into sleep, right? And the reward that you'll feel won't come until you feel like you got a better night's sleep. And of course, there are things that are out of your control. Does your three-year-old even sleep through the night most nights? How do you work out who gets up? Because, you know, I'm sure that you have your fair share of that. What happens if she's sick or not feeling well? So there are going to be things about sleep that are also out of your control. But just parent to parent, I guess when I finally sort of traded in this value of like, you know what, let me just go to bed when they go to bed. It feels awfully early sometimes, but most of the time I realize that my brain needs it. And with respect to social, it's just, I've kind of hit that point of like, there's only so much I could take in looking at the news or looking at just what's happening that it's like, this is, this is not helpful. I just need to step away and breathe or just do something that's beneficial. Oh, absolutely. A lot of it is just, like you said, completely mindless. Like I'll, 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 you know, click on a fishing video. I don't fish. I live near a lake, but I'm pretty sure, you know, you're not going to find great big fishing expeditions out of Lake Michigan. I just, you know, it's just, again, I, I think that you really have a good point when you say it's something that just society doesn't value it. We're not talked about the benefits. You know, we don't talk about the benefits of it much, um, but it has a huge effect on us. And, you know, that's something that I need to really address this year and and moving forward. So, I mean, I'm excited about that because you know what, until this conversation, this recap, Mm -hmm. I don't think I even thought much about the fact that I haven't worked or addressed this particular issue. Mm -hmm. And I I know that it's going to have a significant a positive effect on on my life because much in the same way that I've I've really worked on the other aspects of of my health I think that for me assigning value to it and meaning um I haven't even thought about that in relation to my sleep so I know that if I get better sleep I'm going to just be more present I mm-hmm. feel throughout my day that I'm missing things like little pause buttons where I'm like what did I do that or did I not or I mean I'm kind of more forgetful and a lot of that has to do with age and parents and all that but I can guarantee a lot of it has to do with my lack of sleep and two I know that I can be a better parent whether it be more patience mm-hmm. uh, my ability to tackle some challenges or deal with stress is going to be better aided if I'm rested. And I I forget to remind myself of that. Yeah. And I think you're absolutely right. I think it's just, it's you're identifying something that you can, that you can continue to work on. And hey, I mean, there's a reason why it's about learning and growing. Be patient and kind to yourself. Hey, you know, like I re- re-listened the episode. I realized this is an area that I still want to work on. I think it could give me some positive things. And so here, you know, it could be a really positive thing to explore. Don't expect perfection, but I think it's more about a better self-awareness, right? We can really know ourselves better and what we need and how do we give ourselves what we need and knowing that it's, it is, you know, that there are some things we can control, like how long we'll be on social or how long we'll stay up later kind of watching TV or just kind of getting back some of our, some of our alone time. But I do, this is something I was just reflecting. Um, I was with a friend yesterday out on a run and we were just reflecting on where we're at in parenting and like not wanting to feel shame about the fact that we miss an independence or like part of our something that's like, okay, and it's just me. And I Mm -hmm. think that that could be part of the craving too, right? Just to, oh, yeah. just to I mean, get to just worry about yourself for once I, and nobody yes, else. Yes, I know our listeners can relate. I mean, there are so many things that are going on in your day and um, you see it a lot. I mean, I, I had a parent who worked nights a lot, so 12-hour nights. Um, so she would come back and you would think that she would just go straight to her bed and she would just kind of sit there <laughs> for at least a half an hour, 45 minutes and just decompress mentally from how stressful her job was. But you're absolutely right. There is part of you that craves that, that 
alone time, that mm-hmm. me time, the, oh my gosh, it's quiet time. <laughs> You know, for I need with- seven <laughs> hours of quiet. <laughs> just quiet. Yeah, I mean, and there's times where you just can't help but be up if you have a sick child or you yourself are sick or have a sick loved one. You know, sometimes it's just some of those things are out of your control. But for the majority of the time, I, I am. I'm going to commit to being more mindful when it comes to my sleep and doing what I can to make preparations to to get a fuller night's rest. I think that's awesome to be continued. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. I would love it if, uh, you know, our listeners would share with us about what's keeping them up and how they plan to maybe get better rest. And, And I'll definitely keep everybody updated with me. And that's our show. The podcast is made possible with support from listeners. Please donate to help offset production costs at gofundme.com slash bodykindness. And please rate and review the show when you have a moment. It really matters. Let's keep the conversations going on Facebook. Search Body Kindness and request to join the group for Body Kindness readers and listeners. Have a question for us to answer on a future episode? Visit bodykindnessbook.com slash question. Body Kindness books and audiobooks are available wherever books are sold. To request a signed print copy, visit bodykindnessbook.com slash order. For other questions about this podcast, please email info at bodykindnessbook.com.